we know that layering is a good idea in the world of fashion, right? It adds, what, what do they say, depth and interest to any outfit. Well, that same theory is true when it comes to your makeup. And in today's Style File, we're filling you in on some makeup layering techniques that can make a difference in your finished look. Studio 5 contributor Megan Moore is here to share how to pull off the art of layered makeup. Great to see you. Thank you. We don't want to be pancake face. Nope, we don't want to be flat and one dimensional. Our face has 3D dimensions for a reason. Uh huh. As we put on more layers though, does that contribute to that thickness or that overdone feeling? It definitely can, so you want to be careful of that. I always say thinner layers are definitely going to be your friend, especially as we get older and our texture is more pronounced, mm -hmm. for sure. But I mean, I, if you think about it, it's, there's, layering's always been a part of makeup, right? We've always had this idea that like foundation goes first and then our concealer and then we have this build that we've always kind of done. Yeah. But what I'm seeing now trending and people kind of understanding more is that we don't necessarily need it in a specific order and I think you can get better results when you start to shift things around and have permission to be like, oh, I can put that on first and that on second, I never knew I could. So this is your permission and in fact your encouragement to try things in a different order to get different results. So you're sort of shaking us out of our routine. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I can put my makeup on with my eyes closed because yes. I know exactly what I'm doing in exactly what order. Yeah. You're saying play, have fun. Absolutely, experiment, right? There's no science to this. I would say this is an art of layering, right? There's no hard and fast rules. And I think we've kind of gotten into that maybe mindset in the past where there is hard and fast rules, yeah. where we kind of work in a specific order. But we can get totally different results without buying new products. Like we're just using the products we already have, but in a new way. And all of a sudden we can unlock something that we've never tried before and like, oh, that actually works better for me and my goals. Well, that sounds fun and economical. Yeah. Well done, sister. So for some sure. things to consider consider for different finished outcomes, like you mentioned. First, what finish do I want? Right, so think about it from the outside in and kind of reverse engineer it, okay. right? So what's gonna be on the outside is what people see. So, so I want dewy. Okay, so if you want dewy, it doesn't make sense that you're finishing your routine with a setting powder. But like, that's what a lot of people do. I do right? that. Right, so if you want it to look dewy, you can't have a matte powder on the outside. That just doesn't make sense. But our brains have always been like, oh, that's the last step, right? But instead, what we could do is we could put our powder on halfway through, maybe to set our foundation, but then build our bronzer and our cheek color from there because those are creamy and dewy. And so that's our finished look that's on the outside. I think I was just diagnosed on the spot. <laughs> Called out is more like it, but okay. Another question to consider, what coverage do I want in the end? Right. So if you want a full, full coverage, then it makes sense to put foundation everywhere. That's gonna be, it's gonna cover the most. But if you don't want that, if you like more of a natural look where you still want some of your skin to show through, why are we putting foundation everywhere? Instead, we could strategically place it where we need the, the, the coverage, but then we could let our skin kind of breathe and show through on the outside in the places we don't need the coverage. Suddenly this is just making silly right? sense. Right? <laughs> it's, yeah. like, it's so common yeah. sense, but we just haven't been taught it that way. Okay, if you, you say color plays a role, like how much color we want to put forward. Right, so if you love a big poppy cheek, then that makes sense that that would be on the outside, right? And we wouldn't want to powder it. But some people actually don't love too much cheek. It makes maybe feels a little too foreign on their face. So for them, putting that blush a few layers back and then maybe even building your foundation over the top of the blush and then your powder is going to soften the blush and make it kind of more of a background tone. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. there, but it's more subtle. So where do we want that color to fall in the layering process. Okay, we'll invite the KSL sports team to step aside because Megan's gonna go play-by-play -play announcer on us and okay. we'll, we'll show some photos and you can explain what we're seeing okay. and, and how it ties into what you've been saying. Photos, okay. please. Okay, so on one side, I've got my contour down first and then the other side, I've got my foundation first. So what's gonna happen here? My foundation, if it's, if it's on first, well, then the contour on top of it would be a lot more bold. If I do it the opposite way where I did my contour first, first and then my foundation kind of on top of it, what's gonna happen is my results, I'm gonna have a more subtle contour that's kind of in the background, or on the right where I put the contour on first, it's a lot more noticeable, right? So you're kind of seeing one's fading into the background and one's more in the forefront, depending on where I layered it in the process. Totally that's, makes sense, right? That's kind of fascinating. So this is powder right now, like so I'm taking the shine off on that left side, you can see it's a lot more matte. On the right, I didn't powder yet, so I'm still seeing that glowy kind of finish. So then what's gonna happen on the next step? Well, if I put my blush after the powder, it's gonna pop. 
up because it's on the forefront, right? But if I put my blush underneath, it's going to be more subtle. So you can really see the difference depending on where did I layer my blush with my powder. You can swap those two things out. Look Pretty at cool, right? You. It is. It is cool. And it, it speaks back to what you said in the beginning, that we can use our same products we have yep. in a different way for a different look. So the common order most people are familiar with sort of starts with the primer, right? Yeah, primer. And that would still be the same no matter what. Because it's a, it's kind of your first product. It's kind of your in between your skincare and your makeup. So I'd say primer pretty much stays the same. Um, but then traditionally, I think a lot of people go foundation, concealer, bronzer, blush. You know, there's a pretty common order that things go in. Powder at the end maybe browse after that but I will say that there's so many different options so if you look on the right these are some swaps that you could try so I would keep my primer up front Brows is another thing I'm seeing a lot of people do first. Why would I do that first? Now, you would do this first because pencil, brow pencil, is going to stick to bare skin better than any kind of foundation. If there's anything on the skin oh. first, that waxy consistency doesn't stick as well. So you could try your brows first and see if they stay on better and if they work better for you. And why bronzer before foundation? So if you did your bronzer first, again, it's going to put it back in a further back layer, so it's going to be more subtle. It's going to be a background feature so you're still going to get some contour and some definition but it's not going to be quite as intense as maybe the contouring trick that uh -huh. we've seen around right so maybe you like it better if it's further back in the process that's a great one to try um, the, another thing I, I will sometimes switch is sometimes I want my concealer to be at the forefront so my under eyes are really really bright so I'm going to put that on in a later step because then it's further forward right I actually do that last yeah so that's going to give you the most brightening underneath right yeah. and then again powder and blush is a great one to swap do I want it at the forefront do I want it to stay creamy and dewy and mm -hmm. kind of have that glow or do I want to mattify it want to keep it back and kind of blend it in and have it be more subtle okay. so play around with those swaps and this does the word is play this does speak to what you're so good at which is encouraging us to just have fun to experiment but it also makes some logical sense like it whatever does. you want we're investing our money and our time into this routine and these products so let's put the best thing forward. Yeah, and what is best for me, mm -hmm. right? Do I want, uh, am I want do, dewy and luminous or do I like to be a little bit more matte? Totally play around with it, but All don't right, follow Meg. the rules. Right? Break right. the rules a little bit. All right, where can we follow along and get more advice from you? Come find me at thebeautysnoop.com. I'll have all of this there for you. And then hang out with me on Instagram at beautysnoop. We will. Thank you so much. You bet. 